Timing is the key to hitting a high level forehand. When you watch the best players on the planet play, you see a variety of techniques, different grips, different preparations, different swing paths, different follow throughs. Some have a straight arm, some have a bent arm, but what they've all got is fantastic timing. So there isn't a perfect forehand technique. It's all about what you need to do to make the timing work. When you think about timing, you probably think that you have to meet the ball out in front every time because you'll have heard that a lot from coaches. And while, yes, a lot of the time, ideally, we're gonna make contact with the ball out in front, the reality is that that can't always happen because we deal with such a tremendous variety of different balls. So in actual fact, timing is your ability to make the necessary adjustments to adjust the speed of your swing and to adjust the path of your swing relative to the ball that you're dealing with. And you're trying to make contact in as ideal a position as possible relative to your body and relative to the portion of the swing that you're in. And this is why you see sometimes the follow through finishes around there. So if I meet the ball out in front of my body a little bit more, I've gone through efficient biomechanics. I meet the ball out in front and the natural swing path for the racket is gonna to be to finish over by my other arm. But if I start my swing a little bit later or potentially the ball is coming a little bit quicker, so I'm not starting my swing later. It's just a, a good quality ball that I'm dealing with. Now, I might not have the time to meet the ball out in front. Instead, I'm gonna meet the ball here. So I have to recognize that, and I have to adjust my swing path, and it's gonna change the shape of my follow through because I've adjusted the swing path. So what I'm gonna do in this video is kind of break down and help you to understand what you might need to do to fix and improve your issues with timing, and then talk about some of the technical modifications that potentially you might need to make, because unless you've got timing like the best players on the planet, you probably won't be able to copy their techniques because it's the timing that makes it all fit together and work. The first thing that you might need to fix in order to improve your forehand timing is the preparation. For the vast majority of lower level players out there, the preparation messes everything up that comes after that, including timing. So if you don't prepare soon enough, if you're not preparing until the ball's crossing over your side of the net, the chances of you being able to start your swing at the right time, especially dealing with a harder ball, are very small. So this is what you might need to address. In terms of the preparation, it's also about setting up in the right position. Because we'll be looking at technique in a moment, but for efficient biomechanics, we're always driving through our back or our outside hip to initiate the swing. And if you don't set up the right distance from the ball and you're not balanced when you start your swing, it makes the biomechanics and makes the timing much more difficult. So you might need to really fix your preparation first. Instead of going into that in detail here, I've got a lot of videos that talk about it. I'll place one down in the description so that you can start to go through that one. Because what I wanna do now is talk about some of the adjustments that you might need to make and some of the things that you can do to kind of really improve the quality of your timing and develop a high level forehand. If you're working with a coach or if you've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, the chances are you've been trying to develop a modern forehand or an ATP style forehand. Now, the basics of the biomechanics are that there'll be a good unit term where we turn and rotate the upper body. We're gonna be loading and rotating into this outside hip so we can drive through the hip as we do the unit turn, generally the racket is gonna be a little bit higher. That's gonna allow us to have more leverage over the ball. Often players are gonna be trying to have their elbow a little bit further away from the ball because if you've got the timing for it, that can really allow you to get some additional power. Then it's about driving through the hip. Just after you fire the hip, the torso is gonna to start to rotate. As those things are going on, it creates racket lag. So that pulls my racket into a lag position. If I've got a bent arm, it'll look more like this. If I've got a straight arm, it'll look more like that. And then, so we've driven hip, torso, we've got the racket lag. Now we're rotating forwards, then the shoulder kicks in. And now we're basically throwing the racket forwards at the ball and the racket is following through and around. Now, that's what the pros do. Some have a bent arm, some have a straight arm, like I said, that is the most biomechanically efficient or effective way of generating power and spin so that you can hit with power and still get the ball to land in. But it also involves the best timing and it's the hardest to implement. 
and potentially that might not be the most appropriate thing for you at the moment. So I wanna kind of break this down and help you to understand how we can simplify a stroke. So potentially you might need to simplify your stroke quite considerably. What I've just described there relies on your timing and having the ability to start the swing at the right time and do these movements with enough speed so then I can throw the racket forwards and make contact out in front of my body. Or, as I've already mentioned, if I'm dealing with a harder shot or I'm starting my swing a little bit later, now I can't throw the racket forwards in the same way. Now, I'm still creating the racket lag, but then I'm changing my swing path and whipping up the back of the ball, and I'm finishing with that buggy whip style finish. And again, both of those require tremendous timing. Where things go wrong for most players is they either don't start the swing soon enough or they can't do the racket leg efficiently, they don't have the coordination to fire their body in the correct sequence. So now you get in this position where you're kind of stuck and it's a little bit slow and you're hitting the ball late. So we've got to try and figure out ways that we can adjust and kind of address that. Now the first one is fairly simple. It's just potentially being a little bit more lighter on your toes and focusing on your feet and your hips a bit more because we're going to be initiating from that back hip, potentially just trying to be lighter on your toes and then driving through the hip more might solve the problem instead of thinking about your arms too much. But if we step away from that and kind of think about the technical side of things, it's about reducing the complexity of the shot. So this is very complex. Like the the modern style forehand with a racket tip is pointing down there and the racket face is facing down is ridiculously hard to time because you've got to get from there to there to there. The ATP style or the slightly older modern style is actually a little bit less complex because now we've just got to get from there to there to there. So this, there's more to go wrong with than this. But we can simplify things even further you can just, on your unit turn, instead of trying to copy the pros, you can just take your racket into a position like this. So now I've got a little bit of leverage over the ball. I can just drop the racket down and swing through. Or I could just literally take it straight back into this position. Now I don't have to worry about dropping it now. I can just focus on the fly to the ball. I can hit through the ball or I can hit slightly further up the, up the ball if the ball's a little bit higher, and I can still hit with tremendous power and tremendous spin and accuracy relative to what most people are capable of doing. You won't be able to hit it like Nick Kyrgios if you do that, but compared to the forearm that you've currently got, abbreviating your swing and working on hitting through can be a really effective change to make that allows you to drastically improve your timing. So in terms of the technical adjustments, they're kind of key pieces that I would explore. Something else that's going to potentially be really important for timing is the precise footwork pattern that you're using with your feet at the moment of contact because a lot of players try and hit everything from a neutral stance and that simply doesn't work for a variety of different shots. In order to deal with different types of ball and to have good timing on different types of the ball, we have to drive through our hips and we have to use that motion that I've just talked about. So often you're going to need to hit balls that are a little bit higher from some kind of open or some kind of semi-open stance. But that doesn't always work either. Sometimes when the ball's a little bit further back, you might need to do a reverse single leg pivot. You might need to do an outside hop when the ball is a little bit wider. And then we've got slightly more extreme where we're going to be doing reverse two-legged pivots. So we've got some fairly advanced footwork patterns that are required in order to be able to deal with the variety of balls that you might need to deal with. Here, I just wanted to make you aware of them. I've got another video that's gonna go into a lot more detail, so I'll place a link to that in the description as well, because the final thing we need to talk about is the major limitations that you're gonna to have to overcome if you really wanna develop good timing on your forehand. If you really wanna develop a high-level forehand, then there's a couple of hurdles that you're probably gonna to have to overcome and that is gonna be the visual side of things and the coordination. Because really having good timing, in addition to the technical things that I've just talked about, comes down to how good your eye to hand and your eye to foot coordination is. First, you have to have the ability to predict where the ball's going, and the reality is that most players' visual systems simply do not work at a high enough level to allow them to play tennis in the way that they want. 
If you want to play 5-0 tennis, the visual requirements are dramatically different to playing 3-0 level tennis. So there is a very large likelihood that the reason that you're struggling with timing at the moment is because you can't do what you need to do visually. And then along with that, we've got the coordination. There is a very large likelihood that you are not coordinated enough to play tennis at the level that you've got in your mind because tennis looks very easy when the pros do it and when the coaches describe it but as you've already found out when you step out on court it doesn't work quite that easily because most players coordination simply isn't good enough to play higher level tennis and again it's relative if you want to play 5-0 tennis the requirements for your visual system are dramatically higher than if you're playing 3-0 tennis same thing for 4-0 as you go up through the levels you need a better functioning visual system and a better functioning coordination system. The good news though is that that is stuff that we can actually change with training. I've got a couple of things to help you. I've got a free tennis vision starter program to start training your vision. I'll place a link up there. I'll place a link down in the description. Download it, start working on it. Four or five simple exercises, it's gonna start to really help. But depending on what level you wanna get to, how much you want to improve, there might be additional training that you need to do so if you're interested in learning more, I've created a free masterclass that's going to teach you how you can use brain-based training to improve your visual processing, your reaction speed, your coordination, your timing, your focus, your concentration, all of the underlying skills that really allow you to play higher level tennis and have a better quality of timing. So if you would like to learn more about that, again, I'll place the link up there. And I'll place a link down in the description so you can check it out. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it to be beneficial. You've always got to approach your strokes very systematically. Right back at the start, we talked about the preparation. If that's the issue, that's what you're gonna to need to fix first. Then start to think about using your feet more, making adjustments in terms of simplifying your technique rather than watching more videos about how the pros do it and making it even more complicated. And then of course, training these underlying systems so that you have the skill level to play the sort of tennis that you really wanna be able to play. Okay, any comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.